Hi, welcome to Schofield Farm. My name is Carice, and I'm so glad to have you here today. My family and I live in Northern California in Zone 9B, where we can grow food year round. And we have chickens, bees, we have a dog, we have two geese, and I really wish we had ducks. I'm hoping to add that in 2024. Today, I wanna to talk to you about citrus. We have 17 citrus trees and we have learned through a lot of the hard way of what to do and not do to help citrus thrive in the winter in zones like ours where citrus can be grown. I'm hoping to be able to help you not make the same mistakes that we did in the past and hopefully have your citrus not just survive but actually thrive through the colder seasons, during winter time, during times of frost, and even potentially light freezes. Stick around to the end of video, and I'm gonna tell you a really game changer idea of protecting citrus that a friend of mine shared with me oh, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, and I don't think it's talked about enough online. It's very simple, it's very inexpensive, it's very, very effective, and I'm gonna share it with you when I get out to my mandarin grove. So we're gonna get started with the potted citrus. Let's get started. When I think of growing fruit, citrus is probably my very favorite fruit to grow and I feel super fortunate that we live in an area that you can actually grow citrus. If you drive around the small city that we live just outside of, you will see beautiful mature citrus trees. It is just one of those things that I always thought someday I want to buy a house with mature citrus in the yard because fresh citrus off the tree is like nothing else. The smell is absolutely amazing. I remember growing up with a grapefruit tree outside of my bedroom window. My sister and brother and I, we would make perfume with the leaves of the grapefruit. Even the leaves just are absolutely amazing how they smell, so aromatic. They're a really delightful type of tree to have. However, even in our zone, in our climate, where you can successfully grow citrus trees, the first several years of having a citrus tree while they're young is often a time where they're very tender to cold temperatures. They're actually sensitive to extremely hot temperatures as well, which we have a lot of extremely hot temperatures in our area in the summertime. I'm talking like 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So when I say extremely hot, it's hot and dry, not the favorite of these tropical fruit, but there are ways to make this fruit survive and even thrive. It is something that if you put a lot of hard work in on the front end, you reap lots and lots of reward for years and years to come. As you can see, this is a Meyer lemon and behind me is a Meyer lemon tree. And it is one of my absolute favorite fruits of all time. And I just wanna give you a few tips and tricks to help citrus do well over the winter time. Now, as I said, we have 17 young citrus trees here and we've only owned our property for four and a half years. Some of them have been in the ground for only a year and a half. Lots of them we've decided to have in pots as well as sort of our insurance policy to make sure that we get fruit while the ones in the ground are maturing and hopefully getting established to do well for years and years to come. It is December right now when I'm shooting this video. Now citrus is a fruit that ideally they like temperatures between 60s and 90s. Where we live, we get colder than that. We also get much hotter than that, but that is their ideal thriving point. So when you think about it being colder than 60 degrees, I honestly think they usually do well in the 50s. You're gonna have to make a few preparations if they're going to be in temperatures colder than that. And honestly, temperatures hotter than that, but we're not talking about that today. Now the different types of citrus have different levels of cold that they're hardy to. I can tell you both from experience and also from research that lime trees are the most cold tender the most frost tender. They are the least hardy of the citrus trees in my experience. I have killed multiple lime trees that we tried to plant in the ground, but we could not seem to keep them alive over the winter. And so one of the things I decided to do was put a lime tree in a giant pot and see how it did. And that my friends has made all the difference. It's a bear's lime tree. And as I mentioned, I will only grow it in a pot from now on. 
it has made an enormous difference. Lime trees are super frost tender. You always want to protect the trunk of a tree. This is just label. We've had this in here. I believe we bought this tree a year and a half ago. It successfully survived last winter, which is one of the coldest winters we have had in a very long time. And my thoughts on that winter is one, we had snow and we don't usually get snow here. If we get snow, it's like flurries. It doesn't usually stick. We had snow stick, I think five times. I decided with my potted citrus to pull them against the side of our house. And let me explain to you the reasons why this helped them with cold temperatures and with the snow, specifically even with the lime tree. Eaves of the house both protect with the warmth of the wall next to the pot your house will actually let heat out when it's cold and it will actually be just enough to warm the pots and keep them from freezing. Also, the eaves of the house protect from things like frost and also from snow accumulating on the young trees. It's a great way to grow things like lime, but really I have an insurance policy where I have one of each type of tree in a pot, so I always get fruit. You can even see this bear's lime has a lime right here I haven't picked yet. Did you know that limes are yellow when they're ripe? The stores sell them green, but they're actually ripe into a yellow. We've already picked the rest of the limes for this year, but one more's left. So grapefruit trees, they are hardy to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit when they are mature. All citrus trees, when they are about one to three or four years old, are going to be more frost tender, freeze tender, even if the plant company, the tag says they are hardy to a lower temp, you really have to protect them while they're young. A mature tree is what the temps we're talking about. So everything we think of an immature tree, always think extra protection. The Meyer lemon tree, it is the most hardy of the lemon trees. It's also my favorite because it is a hybrid and it's a little bit sweeter than some lemons. It's actually a hybrid with a type of mandarin orange. And so it's got a, a wonderful flavor. If you haven't had them, they ripen into about an orangey yellow. If you see this, it's not that really cool color yellow. It's like a really warm yellow. They are the best lemonade you will ever have. And we use them in like everything. We freeze the juice in ice cube trays and then pop them into different gallon bags and we have the juice all year long. They are truly my favorite. So Meyer lemons are cold tolerant down to the mid 20s. That is the best you're gonna get from any type of lemon variety. Bear limes, as I said, in my experience and in my research, they are the most tender of all the citrus trees. I don't actually have a temp, but I would tell you like literally anything that's down to frost, you're going to have to be very careful with your lime tree. Of the types of oranges, navel are actually more hardy. We have two Valencia oranges, which are more finicky of the oranges. They are considered zone nine to 12 and they prefer temps of 35 to 50 as the lows for the winter temps. You know, even our zone 9B gets lower than 35. So they're more finicky than navel oranges, which is why I actually have them in pots, like right here. And I like them in pots because I can pull them against the house. I can have them under the eaves. These oranges can only survive 10 hours below 25 degrees. So if you're someplace any colder than I am, you're going to have to be very careful with orange trees. Now, as I said, if you go into town, we live actually outside of town where we're technically not in any city limits where we are right now, where we live. But if you go into town, you'll see big, beautiful orange trees. They do grow here in the ground. They do get really mature, but the Valencia orange is more finicky than the navel orange. So I picked Valencia oranges knowing I'd have them in pots and that works for us in our situation. Would they get to a mature size in my ground? I'm not sure because we are in a colder microclimate. And so I have to make adjustments knowing that our little area is just slightly colder than just going a couple miles the other way into town. And there could be a lot of reasons for this, but because I have thermometers 
on my property, I have a sensor in my garden. I can track the temps and compare them. And I have found that we get frost, we get freezes, and some of my friends just a few miles away can actually get through the winter sometimes with never getting an actual frost in their garden. So in our area still qualifies as 9B, but it's got some little cold pockets and some little colder lows where I actually take that in mind, especially with growing citrus. When you're talking about oranges, mandarins are the way to go. Mandarins are like the most hardy. The Satsuma mandarin is actually hardy down to 15 degrees Fahrenheit when it's mature. That is pretty crazy low. I was surprised to read that because for me, my Clementine mandarins seem to do better than my young Satsuma. But as I said, young trees are a whole different story. The Clementine mandarin is hardy down to 18 degrees when it's mature. So it's, it's not that far off from the Satsuma. But as I said, as young trees, they seem to do a lot better. Now I decided for having my in-ground citrus to have a mandarin grove that are Satsuma and Clementine mandarins. And then I have one Meyer lemon tree planted outside my bedroom window. It is the very first tree, the very first thing that we planted on our property right after we closed escrow, just a couple days before my 40th birthday. So it was a gift for my husband knowing my deep love for Meyer lemons and knowing that it takes a really long time for a tree to produce and bear fruit. So when you're developing a property, developing a garden, you want to invest in your fruit trees first, if at all possible or early, you can always add to them as you go like we have, but because they are such a long wait, it's a really good thing to get them in early if you can. That way, as you're developing the rest of your property, your garden, your fruit guilds, your perennials, your ornamentals, those are actually getting a chance to get through the seasons they need to, to produce fruit from you later on. Now we have a couple of different unusual types of mandarins that I got. I actually got them from Costco. One's called a Tangelo. Mineola Tangelo is a cross of a tart Duncan grapefruit and a sweet dancy tangerine and they need to be protected anything lower than 20 degrees. I do not get lows of 20 here, which is so awesome. We do get lows of 25 a couple times a winter, not usually long, long time there, but we do dip down to there. But the 20, it feels like the Tangelo should be fine for us. I have just one fruit on it and it's super cool. If you look at it, it's more the size of an orange than a mandarin. I also went ahead and invested this last year in what is called a Tanjo Mandarin. And I'm excited about that one. It's pretty new to me. It is very frost tender from what I have read. So I'm very glad I put it in a pot. It is tender at 32 degrees. If someone has grown them and has different information than I do, I would love that because when I read that, I thought, ooh, I'm very glad it's in a pot because we definitely do get frost and frost is 32 degrees. So this one all winter long is gonna be snug against my house for the warmth, for the eve protection. And I think it's gonna be just fine if we do that there, but I'm very glad I did not put it in my mandarin grove because I have a feeling that would have died very quickly like my lime trees did. Now this is what the Tanjo should look like when it is ripe. We don't have any on this tree this year. Totally normal for a first year tree. Now the tag actually says it's good for a container, patio or walkway. So this is the super frost tender one. I think I made the perfect choice putting it in a pot, having it against the house all winter long. We'll pull it back out for its beauty and for more sunshine come the spring. Also totally normal not to have any fruit on it its first year. These baby trees really need to concentrate on root growth and development before they spend their energy growing fruit. Look at all of those Meyer lemons. This tree is literally about to fall over. It's so heavy with fruit. And if you look carefully, I had it out by our driveway and the deer ate all the foliage off around the fruit. I think they mostly left the fruit alone, but those leaves will have to fill back in in the spring and they will, but I thought that was an interesting observation. 
These grapefruits are almost ready. They are beautiful. This is a tree I would love to transfer to the ground when it gets a little bit older because as I said, I grew up with a big, beautiful grapefruit tree outside my window and they're a quite lovely tree. They're so pretty. And I think this one, I think I have a perfect spot for it actually. You can see as they mature, the trunk gets bigger, it gets thicker and it gives me more confidence that it's going to do well. We have it ratcheted right there to keep it from falling over since the fruit is so heavy. We have to keep it growing upright in the container. That makes me think this might be good to get in the ground at some point here. I don't know if this year or next year, but, but some point in the near future. Even though I have a mandarin grove, I do have these clementine in a pot because they're beautiful ornamental looking trees and we can still eat from them. And it's nice to have them right by my front door as well as going out to my little area of mandarins I'm trying to establish in the ground. But this one is just loving life. You look at the trunk, it is nice and thick. It is a healthy tree and I'm super thankful for it. These are almost ready to pick. They are so close. I usually have my citrus right here along the driveway and they're really pretty, but they're so close to pull against the house. Now, as I walk over to my citrus grove, I wanted to talk to you about frost covers. This is another great tool to have in the tool belt for especially young citrus that you're wanting to protect over the winter. The cool thing about my potted citrus is pulling them against the house under the eaves. I have not had to use a bag or a cover on them at all, which is crazy, you guys, because as I mentioned, lime trees are so, so tender. To think of making it through the winter without having to have a bag on it shows you how much that little bit of warmth from the house and the protection from the eaves makes an enormous difference. It is amazing. Our pots are also dark colored, which means they absorb more sunlight, more heat. I think that makes a difference of just the teeny tiny bit of warmth that can change one night for a tree that is sensitive to cold temperatures. Now we are headed over to my Mandarin Grove. I have a friend that lives outside, well, they used to live outside of the city we're near, second sunniest city in the US, by the way. And they lived a different direction than us and they had a beautiful mandarin grove and we would buy mandarins from him and my kids would go over and pick mandarins. We'd weigh them, we'd take tons and tons of home. It was just so wonderful. And he was my inspiration for my little mandarin grove once we got this place. So hopefully I'm making Larry proud if he sees this video. He knows I'm growing them because of his huge success with mandarins. Let me show you my trees. Let me talk to you about the things that I'm doing now and the things I'm planning to do to help them do well through the winter because they're all very young trees. I'll show you my oldest established one and then the really, really young ones that I've only had since April of 2022. Right now it's December, 2023. So that's a year and a half I've had them. You'll see they look young and small, but there's a reason for that. They are young and small. This is my little mandarin grove and it's right on the edge of this enormous eucalyptus tree. Did you even know eucalyptus can be a 60 foot tall tree? Yes, it can. That is what it's like in our zone. I see people grow it as annuals in their garden bed and I think, how? How would it even fit? This one is only a year and a half old. And if you look down, we have four in the front and we have four in the back. This is my oldest, most established. You can tell just by the bushiness. You want mandarin to grow more like a bush. Having the low hanging branches actually helps protect the tree. The soccer ball's doing nothing for it. And that's one piece of advice I'd have about citrus and protecting them from the cold is having low hanging branches. You don't really need to prune citrus a whole lot. The only time you prune citrus is kind of for shape. You also would prune the dead branches off if you have any branches that have died. I had that happen after the snows. I had frost covers on them. I didn't think about the fact that the frost covers would be heavy with snow and it broke some of the top branches. My tree survived, 
But next time, if we actually had snow stick, which does not happen here a lot, I'm telling you guys, I am super a newbie with dealing with snow. I would take the covers off and just brush the snow off the tree. And I think that would be more protection for the tree than a frost cover since the frost cover got just so heavy and hurt the tops of some of my trees. So these low hanging branches are super helpful to the health of the citrus. You want them more like bushes, honestly. They do really good in a bush shape versus a skinny tree shape. And I'll show you another reason why, because not only are we putting these on on really cold nights where they can get rain through them, they can get sunlight through them, I will leave this on honestly for months. Once the temps start hitting really low at night, and by low, I mean I'm nervous kinda anytime it's in the upper 30s. I know they're fine, but I never know in our cold pocket if it's gonna dip too cold. So I'll put these on the young trees and I'll just leave them on. They get the water, they get the sun, the filtered sun, they're just totally fine. And I'll leave it there until the threat of a really cold night leaves and I'll even leave it on when there's not a threat because it's easier sometimes for me to remember since they're safe under there just to not have to go run out when I get an alert on my app that the garden has a really cold low I don't have to run out in the dark and do it there's already on now when you're putting frost covers or blankets or even if you did like plastics over them you want to make sure you put it on before sunset while it's still kind of warm you want to have it go all the way down to the ground and not have gaps where the cold air is going to come in the part of your tree that is the most delicate is actually the lower trunk it's actually the graft spot most citrus are grafted most of them the, they have a rootstock that isn't a really good flavored citrus it'll be a really terrible tasting kind of orange tree that you don't want but they're more hardy and so that graft joint area is the most sensitive place when you plant a tree that has a graft you're going to want to put that graft facing like the northeast so you don't get direct brutal sunlight in the heat on it same thing about the frost it's going to be the thing you want to protect the most so when you have the frost cover on you want it to go all the way to the ground some people will put rocks, bricks, you know, sticks, something around it so it doesn't get blown off if it's windy during the cold temps. And that is going to help your tree hold in maybe just enough heat to help it survive. Also, and I'll, let me show you how to do that. Let me show you how I put it on and maybe that will kind of simplify it for you. I got these frost covers off Amazon. Right now I don't have a link. If I ever do have a link, I'll put it in the description below, but right now I don't have an Amazon store but they're pretty simple. They've lasted me several seasons. They have kind of a cinchy string at the bottom and they sell different sizes. So you can look at your citrus tree and kind of judge by the size of it, what size you need to order. If you had a giant, giant tree, like the grapefruit tree I grew up with, you wouldn't need this. You wouldn't be able to get a bag big enough to fit over it. But as I said, the young trees are more susceptible to damage from the cold, especially from a cold snap. Let me talk about that for a second before I show you how to put the cover on the tree. So all plants that are going to be perennial, that are going to live through the winter, even if they aren't deciduous and lose their leaves, even if they're evergreen like a citrus tree, they will go into kind of a dormancy. And so it's pretty important that you don't feed your trees in the fall or even some areas in the late summer because you're kind of encouraging it to put on new growth, to keep that sap really flowing, to stay in its like growth stage. And you really do want to encourage them to kind of take a little winter's nap in a dormant state and they'll be able to deal with cold temperatures better in a dormant state than if they are vigorously having the sap flow through them they're trying to you know put on their blossoms they're trying to set fruit the time that i lost the most of my citrus was one year where we had a very early fall spring we had like 80 degrees multiple days in february and everything woke up everything woke up everything was blossoming and i'm telling you even my pomegranates were putting on their leaves they had buds and then we had a crazy cold snap and i want to say it was like a low right around it hit 25. and this was in late april this was not normal for our area it was normal though to have erratic temperatures that is very normal but to have that drastic of a swing after all of the fruit trees had their sap flowing 
that was unusual and i actually even lost a pomegranate tree that, that year and pomegranates are actually hardy really really low like like i don't even know what zone i should look it up and put it on the screen for you but they're hardy really low and it definitely shouldn't have died from 25 degree dip but because it was not in dormancy that's what happened and we lost several mandarins that year we lost a lime tree that year again <laughs> We lost quite a few trees. We lost, I'm trying to think, I think we even lost a type of orange tree. I think it was like a cara cara or something like that. It was a very sad year. So even though last year was colder as a winter for us, much colder than our winters usually are. I mean, snow and really cold temperatures, sustained lows that were really just unusual. We don't usually have lots and lots of lows in, the, in a row in the 30s. That's just not normal for us. Kind of a baby when it comes to cold weather. But it was kind of just like that. It was that really cold winter. But the good news is they were in dormancy and I had them covered and they all did fine. I didn't lose one tree last year, whether it was in the ground or in a pot, nothing was lost. And I feel like it wasn't like jerking them around up and down. We just had a cold winter for us, relatively cold, right? You got to take that with a grain of salt, but they did better. And so I think one, letting them be in a dormant state and not feeding them. That's super important when it's going to get cold. You do want to feed them in late spring and in the summer. Don't get me wrong, that's very good for them, but you don't want to feed them the time they're supposed to be kind of going to sleep. Two, covering with a frost cloth when it's a tree in the ground. If you have a colder place than I do, and even, you know, depending how cold you might want to cover with a frost cloth or a bag, trees that are even in pots. Because as I said, my lows are not your lows. I do know some citrus is considered hardy to lower temps than we have, but as I said, colder weather with younger trees is not it doesn't go well so you might want to put frost bags even on your potted citrus in colder areas i have another thing i do too that i'm going to show you right when i show you how i put the bag on which is a really cool tip a friend gave me and i've loved it and i can't wait to share it with you because even when i was looking online to just kind of refresh myself of different temps that they're hardy to. I didn't see a lot of people talking about this tip and it's worked so great for me. I can't wait to show you it. Seriously, guys, I, I didn't come up with it, but it feels like not enough people know about this next tip. Okay, remember when I told you Satsuma are hardy lower than Clementine? This is a very sad little Satsuma tree. And this is the example of how it got crushed. I had to take off the tree right here, a bunch of branches that got crushed by the weight of the snow under the frost covers. So learn from my mistake. Do not make the same mistake. Do not let your things be covered and crushed by the snow. It's better to just brush the snow off and not have the cover for these things to not die from just the weight. Okay guys, I'm going to show you how to put this on and I'm going to talk to you about what this is right here because this is the handy little tip I have that I don't think enough people know about. You can put piping insulation these are just the foam things. You literally could even do this with like a pool noodle if you wanted to. You just slice it and you put it on. And guys, this protects, ooh, there's a spider. <laughs> wow, the things you find when you're growing things organically. Okay, this protects the graft part so well and this being the dark color, the black, it actually attracts heat and it keeps the most delicate part of your tree warm in the time that it needs it most. This is more delicate. The trunk of the tree here is more delicate than the leaves. It seems like it would be the leaves that are more delicate, but no, it is the trunk of the tree. And this insulation, pipe insulation foam, it's super cheap at any big box store and it can save you so much in not having to replace trees that die. I love that. This is our drip line. Another tip I have is watering. Water actually holds warmth. So if you water your trees, when you see a cold front coming, you see lows on the horizon, it actually helps hold warmth down there in the soil that protects the tree. And that, my friends, I learned, and I think it's the coolest thing. I would think water freezes, right? Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. I would think that would be the opposite, that water would make them, you know, more susceptible to freeze or frost. But actually having the soil warm with water, or if you have like mulch, it is better for the tree. So if you see cold front coming, 
deeply water your trees and obviously water them in the daytime so that it can absorb the warmth of the sunshine or even of the air and it is going to help your trees do better. Let me show you how I put this frost cover on. It's really, really easy. I can do it like super fast. Let me show you this. Okay guys, so I just take the cover. There's a cinch. Make it wide enough for the tree. You wanna go over your tree while it's still light outside. You wanna go all the way down. This is a very small tree. See, it could be for a much larger size tree you want to cinch down around the bottom. You don't want air to come in. You want to put it so that, you know, whether you have mulch or something or some big rocks or stones, you take a few things and kind of hold it down so it doesn't fly away. And that's it. It's that simple. It literally can even touch the foliage and it's not going to hurt it because it's not plasticky. And that's an important distinction to note. If you cover with like tarps or plastic, like um, painter's plastic or those kind of things, you don't want it to touch the foliage. It will damage the foliage. It will get too cold and damage the foliage. But if you're using these frost covers, I have had them touch the foliage and the foliage has been fine. If you are using something plastic, something like a tarp, you're gonna wanna like build a little frame or something, like have some sticks put in, some stakes put in and have it kind of tarp over it and then put rocks or pieces of wood or bricks down around it to keep it from blowing away. And it creates kind of like a tent that will keep your warmth in. And that's what I would do, but I have not had a problem with these frost covers. If other people have, you can let me know in the comments and let me know what zone you're in because it might have to do with the zone, but in our area, these have been just fine and they have protected it all except from snow. Do not do it with snow, take it off for the snow, but any type of cold temperatures, it has been fine and they've done great for me. I just leave them on. I leave them on for months sometimes. I don't worry about taking them off until we're actually, you know, truly in a hot, hot time. But I haven't put them on this season yet. We've been pretty good and we'll probably put them on. You know, usually our coldest month is usually like February-ish time. Even though we'll have 80 degrees in February, it feels like the lows are more consistently low. Yeah, even more than January. I, I could be wrong this year, but that's kind of my memory. It's usually February. So they'll probably be on for quite a while around then, especially if the sap starts kind of flowing in them and we have some false spring. I really want to protect them then because they're going to be more susceptible to getting damaged if it gets really cold after it was warm and it starts to put buds on and new growth. And as you can see, I don't have them on here yet and they're, and they're doing just fine. They're doing just fine. So you guys, let me know if you'd heard of that wrapping the trunk with the pipe insulation idea before. I'd love to hear just like a, a casual poll of who's heard of it and who is new to it. I know people will wrap trunks with different things, but this was just such a cheap, fast, easy option to have. And I love it. I love it. And even if my dog runs off with it, it's, it's cheap for me to replace them. Now I want to tell you an idea I haven't done. I read about it a lot online. I'm curious your thoughts about it and I'd love your feedback. Some of you have grown citrus for a really long time so you can tell me if this was worked for you. But I read some advice online about how it was better to pull the mulch back if you're anticipating a really cold night, pull it back while it's still warm outside and water deeply and then let the soil absorb the sunlight and that that would radiate heat up to help the trunk of the tree over the night and that actually having the bare soil that is watered well watered and that is warm by the sun is better than the mulch and i have always mulched deeply i'm i've you know i'm a follower of like the back to eden garden methods and we love wood chips we get them by the huge huge truckload from utility companies from chip drop those different places so we have our entire citrus bed very deeply mulched it has helped amend our soil i have a whole video about mulch and the magic of mulch the way nature intended soil to be taken care of that you can watch i will make sure to link it for you we love deep mulch wood chips i mean it has really helped the whole the health of the soil it's helped with our heat i feel like it's helped with the cold but i'd love to hear if you've tried the pull back the mulch method where you pull back mulch water deeply let the sunlight warm it and that it's supposed to help citrus on a really cold night i would love to hear your feedback because that's one i have never tried but i did want to mention it because it seemed like it was talked about a lot online and i was curious curious who's done it has it worked has it not worked we have really red clay soil and if i pull the mulch back look you see worms there are worms there 
you don't see the red clay at all. I mean, this is like beautiful soil that literally is all of these wood chips that were very deeply mulched that have broken down and it's made really healthy soil here where we didn't have good loose soil. We had rocks and red clay. This has made a huge difference to the health of our trees and really everything we've grown here. So that's why I'm curious about those of you who pull mulch back because I've had nothing but good to say about doing wood chips and deep wood chips. So please give me some feedback. Look at this absolutely amazing mushroom. I'm telling you, that is from wood chip mulching. I don't even know what kind that is, but here it is at the base of this mandarin tree. And that is like way too awesome. I love how it encourages the soil to have diversity of life and the fungi, the good fungi life that helps the tree. It actually helps the tree get water. It's, I read some amazing studies on wood chips and the fungi, the whole fungi thing it produces and how it helps the trees. It's fascinating. So I mentioned how dry soil freezes more and watered soil holds in heat better. That's just so neat to me. Last one I wanted to mention to you guys and I'm going to show you my in-ground little Meyer lemon tree. It's a dwarf. It's small on purpose. So we did not amend the soil like you should when we first planted it and learned the hard way. It's the one tree of ours that struggles the most even though we have kept it alive and it is growing. But I wanted to mention putting twinkle lights on your citrus. We've done this with mixed success. I feel like the pipe insulation and the frost bags have been much better. The pots have been much better, but twinkle lights are very pretty and you have to do the ones that aren't LED because LED don't put off the heat. You want to do incandescent. They're usually the cheaper bulbs too, honestly. They put off heat and so that is something that you could do to help your citrus as well. But usually, as I said, it's actually the trunk and the graft union that are most susceptible. So you'd want to wrap it up the trunk more than just protecting the foliage. And that is something I learned the hard way too. As I said, I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I've made. So I'm trying to share from our experience, our failures and our success to help you grow citrus successfully because it is one of the best kinds of trees to have. It just is. Citrus is by far so rewarding. This is my little Meyer lemon tree. This is the one that we planted when we first got our property before we even lived at the house. And we got the foam insulation there. It is a little bit yellowy. It's actually doing all right. It's kind of dormant, but this one, we did not amend the soil. It's clay soil, it's rock soil. It's very alkaline, citrus-like, more acidic soil. So that was a mistake that we learned from and we did it totally differently on all of our other citrus, both our potted ones with doing a really good, like more acidic citrus type of mix that is for pots but also in the ground mending it that is really important to know with citrus is they do not like the super alkaline soil and so we just had so much yellowing problems if you have a lot of yellowing it could be a water issue it could be an iron issue it could be that you need nitrogen there's a lot of things but if you don't have acidic soil if you have more clay soil like we do I would definitely make sure that you amend if you're going to do in-ground citrus. This even has some beautiful lemons right here. They are Meyer lemons as well, but look, they're not quite as mature as the ones that I have up front in the pot. My potted citrus mature faster, which is really interesting to me. I mean, this is the one from the pot and look how orange it already is. More like a Eureka lemon when it's ripe, but that pale yellow with a Meyer lemon means it is not ripe. So that's, that's things that you learn as you're trying to grow all the different ones. You learn the little differences and stuff. Oh gosh, guys, it's so fun. I really like talking about citrus because I really like eating citrus. My kids could sit and eat citrus all day. Like that mandarin tree that looks packed with, with mandarins in that pot, that's gonna be gone in like one afternoon. When you have seven kids, the amount they eat, especially when five of them are boys that are you know, preteen all the way up till 20. Well, he's almost 20, but it is insane. The amount of food that they can just shovel down, especially when it tastes so candy-like, like mandarins. It is craziness. You guys, I have loved having you. I have loved talking to you about citrus. If this is something that you're interested in, let me know and I will do more videos just sharing our experience with citrus and anything that I can help encourage you to grow it. I'd love to. I do have a video about, let's chat about citrus and it's actually one of my most watched videos so far. I do talk about why I think growing citrus in pots is the way to go. I feel like it just makes it more growing friendly for more people, even people in zones like ours that 
are rated able to grow citrus, it just really helps them be able to be fruitful and survive when you can pull the pot against a house or even some colder areas. Maybe you would bring it inside. I have a friend who brings all our potted citrus inside. Then she strings them with Christmas lights and it's like Christmas decor in December and it's absolutely beautiful. And I just, I do want to make growing food something that more people can do and are less intimidated by. And that is part of why I really do think that growing potted citrus is a very friendly way to grow citrus. I do have aspirations to be successful on my Mandarin Grove, but that's not gonna work for everyone. I mean, even in our area with cold pockets, it's just not gonna work for everyone because you have to put a lot more time and effort into helping them in those first few years where they're so, so, so frost tender. Even the mandarins that are, you know, supposedly hardy down to 15 degrees, which we never, ever, ever get 15 degrees. Never, but you know, we've had some die from a cold snap of 25, you know, you just don't know. So it takes commitment to do them in ground, but I do feel like even that commitment is gonna be worth it. You guys, thank you for joining me. I hope that you learned something. Just a quick review. Potted citrus is one way to protect your citrus over the winter with them, hold them against the house, get the warmth of the house, the protection of the eaves. It'll help you with frost, it'll help you with snow, and it will help you with the warmth. If you need to, you can cover them with frost bags. If they are in the ground, I definitely recommend frost bags. I think they're great because they let in sunlight, they let in moisture from the rain, they aren't going to freeze the leaves if they're touching the foliage at all. That is, that's why they're my go-to, not plastic, not tarps. We did the tarp thing. We had so much foliage damage, even with trees that survive. I just don't think that is my favorite favorite way of doing it. I do highly, highly, highly recommend the pipe insulation, the black pipe insulation. Even the color black is very helpful with pulling in the heat from the sunshine before a cold night. You want to protect that graph union. You want to water deeply before cold temps because remember, well-watered soil holds warmth better than dry soil. Dry soil is much more likely to freeze and mulching has been great for us but let me know what you think about pulling the mulch back i'm really curious how that works for you and twinkle lights twinkle lights are a thing that a lot of people use we have used them in the past you know i haven't done it this year last two years but they're very very pretty when they're on it makes it really festive and beautiful so it's not something I'm opposed to using in the future i actually love twinkle lights on trees so i if i can rope my husband into doing the future you better believe we're gonna have twinkle lights over everything i possibly can <laughs> But yes, I really hope that your citrus does well over the winter. And if you have any questions, if you have any any comments and feedback to share about citrus, about growing citrus, please, please let's dialogue in the comments. I want to grow a community of people who are encouraging each other and helping each other. We all have different expertise. We all have different amounts of experience. We live in different regions. And a lot of times you can help people more than I can because you might be in a really similar growing climate to them and they'll read your comment and that's the thing that helps them build the confidence to grow their own food. I will see you soon. I love, love to take you guys on this journey with me. Thank you so much for spending your time, just taking time to listen to one of my passions, which is these lemons. Have a great day. These actually look ready to pick. They're a little bit squishy and yet they are firm, soft but firm. I think we're gonna try it. I don't like to pick all of my mandarins at once because if they are sour and tart, I want to give them a few, few more days or weeks, but this one looks really good.